It's the GTN Show, and we are going big, talking further, faster, and longer, as today we are discussing some impressive recent world records that have just been broken, as well as one that's in the pipeline. Yeah, and it might only be two weeks to go till the Ironman World Championships, but we still have plenty of racing for us to discuss. There's also been talk of a new owner of the Ironman group, and we have the lucky winner to announce of our Oakley Aero 7 giveaway. Records are getting broken every day, so for one to catch a right, it's got to be quite impressive. We have recently discussed new times at Enduro Man, the 12-hour running record that got broken, but this one has taken things to another level because someone has just swam the English Channel four times in a row. Yes, now Sarah Thomas from Colorado has become the first person to swim from England to France four times consecutively. Now, there were three other people who had done this three times across, but she has, by virtue of this four crossing feet, which she took 54 hours to do, become the first person to swim four times. Yeah, so from going from the UK to France back again <laughs> twice, it should have been around 80 miles, but mm. It actually ended up being close to 130 due to the currents changing. So, I mean, that just makes it incredible on its own. But then if you imagine if anyone's ever swum in the water off the UK, it's pretty fresh, yes. even at this time of year. And for it to be an official record, it had to be without a wetsuit. And on top of that, Sarah had to negotiate the busy shipping lanes that mm. go up the English Channel, as well as obviously the fact that there's jellyfish everywhere, the effect of salt on your body and your mouth, and mm. trying to take nutrition on whilst in the water. And just to make it even more impressive, last Last year, Sarah had recovered from breast cancer. Yeah, so our sister channel across the office, GCN, were rather busy last week in the velodrome riding a penny farthing because, yes, sometimes you do have to think a little bit outside the box to get yourself into that Guinness World Record book. So our fellow presenter, Chris Opie, he has ridden a penny farthing, and recorded rather, the furthest distance ever ridden on a penny farthing in an hour. Now, if you are interested in finding out quite how far Chris rode that penny farthing, then keep an eye on the GCN channel over the next few days. And that leaves running, obviously, but a record that hasn't yet been broken. You might well have heard us talking previously on GTN about the Ineos 159. Well, that is the bid for the reigning Olympic champion and current marathon world record holder, Elliot Kipchoge, to run under two hours, to be the first man to break that two hour barrier when it comes to the marathon. And his team of huge amount of support staff and support runners have been out in Vienna, in Austria, where they plan to do this in a, just over a couple of weeks time. Mm. They've been out there practicing and really no stone has been left unturned. So I think it's looking pretty likely, but an exciting one to keep an eye out on. Yeah, so whatever your own personal goals are, hopefully there's some inspiration in amongst there for you. And none of us really know what our own boundaries are or where we can go with our own goals. But indeed, what are the limits of human endurance and possibilities? Now, Heather, I don't think that we really should gamble too much, but do you think that the sub two hour is gonna be broken? I'm not going to give it away yet. I've got a very strong opinion on this, but I want to know from you guys. So that takes us on to this week's GTN poll. And if you think Elliot Kipchoge is going to go mm. under two hours in October, then let us know by clicking on the poll just up here. That's a yes or a no. Now, in last week's poll, you and Mark had a rather interesting conversation about what is your favourite type of road. So our results are in and bottom of the pile was 2% with other. Next up was 11% for the technically challenging road, which I can see, I quite like that. 22% was our third choice with a sea view. Again, not bad. 24% um, was our second from top, fast and flat. That wouldn't be my personal favorite. This would be my favorite too. The winner was 39% as a mountainous road. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we gave you guys a very exciting chance to get your hands on a brand new Oakley Aero 7 time trial helmet, and we do have our winner. Oh yes, it is, Braden Halverson. So well done, Braden. We'll be in touch and sending you that wonderful helmet. So moving on to our try new section now. First up, we're gonna talk about some indoor training with Zwift. Now, if you haven't already seen our video that just got released this last weekend where Team GTN took on Team 
Charles Barkley on a sort of convoluted indoor duathlon challenge. Well, quite frankly, I think you're missing out and you need to find that video and see what we were up to. Well, if you are a regular Zwifter, then you might well know that when you're in-game or you're riding on Zwift that you can change and customise mm -hmm. what your avatar is wearing. And you might well have noticed, if you've watched this video that Fraser's talked about, that Mark and Fraser were wearing a GTN kit Oh, well, their avatars were, obviously they were as well. <laughs> so, and it's actually sparked a bit of a conversation. Some of you asking how you can get the same avatar kit. Yeah, so if you two are keen to continue Zwifting in GTN colors like Mark and I wear, then please get yourself involved and customize yourself in game on Zwift. You might not be familiar with the Professional Triathletes Organization, but they're a union that formed about three years ago with the idea to have a voice for the pro triathletes. But there's nothing been too significant that's come out of their action until just now. However, this week, the organization have just appointed a new CEO in the shape of Sam Renouf. Now, he comes with a very background, having worked at executive level with both the Active Network and Motive Group. And he also, that, well, that is coupled with him having been an elite triathlete himself. So he's just got an awful lot of um, knowledge to bring to the table in that capacity. And essentially with him at the helm, the PTO have approached the Wonder Group, who currently own Ironman and all of their associated assets, about the possibility of apparently an all cash transaction. Now, given Wanda only bought the Iron Man brand not that many years ago for many hundreds of millions of dollars, should I say, that isn't going to be a small sum of money. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, some pretty big news and exciting to see that you know the professional athletes could start to mm. really move things and change things in the sport. And hopefully we'll start to see that actually you know the triathlon community benefits as a result. Well, something that Triathlon has got sorted is giving back to the community. From a recent event, the Nautica Malibu Triathlon has raised some significant funds for a local charity. Now, this event attracts celebrities and alongside that, some great financial backing too. Yeah, now, since the race happened some 10 days ago, they have been able to present a cheque for $1.3 million to the Children's Hospital of LA, which is incredible, plus a further $282,000 donation from Bob Iger at Team Disney. And since the race started, it has amassed over $15 million in charitable donations. Nutrition brand Morton have just released two new products, one of which is unofficial. Well, it's officially launched, but they're actually going for unbranded packaging. And this is because quite a few pros are choosing to use their products mm. who are actually sponsored or have relationships with other nutrition companies and have to officially use that. So it's kind of a way to get around this and it's saying, you know, we recognize that pros want to use our products and here's a way you can do it. Yeah, it's cheeky, but very interesting as well. And they've also added another product to the range with a caffeine gel. And what they've managed to do with their hydrogen technology is basically keep those high levels of caffeine in there that are needed, but without having to affect the flavors and add in other masking agents to do so. So it's just a really cool um, twist from this young company, really, that have got a lot of backing from the likes of Jan Frodeno and Triathlon and Mofar and Il Kipchoge in Marathon Running as well. But all unofficially. Now, moving on to our race news, and there was many races this weekend, but first up was Ironman Italy. And on the men's side, there was a fantastic victory for Australian Cameron Worth in a time of seven hours, 46 minutes, 54 seconds, which is quite incredible, but I'll come back to that in a second. Second place went to Jaroslav Kovacic from Slovenia, and third place was Giuliano Molinari from Italy. So we had a home athlete on the podium at least. But when I mentioned Cameron's time there, I thought that is an incredibly fast time, but I couldn't quite remember what the all time list was. So I got in touch with our good friend of the channel, Torsten Rad from Try Rating, to see if he could firm up my suspicions. And I was right, because Cameron's time was the ninth fastest Ironman distance time ever, according to Torsten. So thank you very much for that, Torsten. And as a quick plug, he has just published his Kona report where he puts everything you could ever want to know about Kona into a very handy document so you can find that online at tryrating.com. Yeah, perfect for some bedtime reading if you're into triathlon. You've got two <laughs> weeks to get through it, well three <laughs> weeks I think. Um, but on the women's race it was a fast time, the winning time was 8.48.23. That was Caroline Leyrider who took the win. Second place went to Jenny Schultz and then it was Maureen Hoof from Germany. Actually it was a clean sweep for Germany for one, two and three. Now moving down a distance to Olympic distance for the ITU World Cup from Wehe in China and we had a win for Yel Silva from Portugal. Second place went to Max Studer from Switzerland and third place from my hometown in Sterling, Grant Sheldon from the UK. You had to get it in, didn't you? I Fraser? did, yeah. yeah. The women's that. race was won by Julie Duron of Switzerland, Miriam uh, Casillas-Garcia from Spain was second and then Verena Steinhauser was third. 
Now moving on to Ironman 70.3 Weymouth where they had a slightly shortened swim but they still got a triathlon to go ahead and the winner was George Goodwin from the UK, second place was Adam Bowden from the UK and third place was also Elliot Smales, former winner of that race in Weymouth from the UK. Well the theme continues, not that we're biased but it obviously was a home event and it was a clean sweep for Great Britain. The women's side, Indy Lee taking the win, Claire Han in second and Katrina Rye finishing third. So changing uh, format slightly, we've got Xterra now and the inaugural event from China at Lake Kumling, which looks stunning from the pictures, in fact. And the win on the men's side went to former world champion from Maui, Ruben Rosava from Spain. Second place was Brice de Bort from France and also from France for the final spot on the podium was uh, Maxime Chain. And the women's race was won by Fabiola Carola. Karina Vassal was second and then third place went to Lizzie Orchard. Now we're covering all concepts of racing this week, but finally we have an Otolo race to cover and it was the first qualifying event for next year's World Championship and that was the 1000 Lakes event, which is apparently a, another stunning location. So the winning uh, men's team rather was Team Head Matt Sud running and they're a French team. And the mixed team was won by Team Toule Crew and then the women's team event was won by Team Enville. Right, it's time for us to take a look at some of your photos and we've chosen a nice unique selection this week. Our first one comes in from Stefan and it yeah. looks as though he's having a tough day here, doesn't it? Yeah, he's had a little bit of a tumble. You um, tell me that there was a one foot wall in the way that he didn't spot, is that right? Yeah, apparently so. So he's just written, uh, taken just after swim, heading to T1 in his first triathlon. So, you know, respect there. Um, but too tired to lift his leg up that high, so <laughs> fell over. His wife informed him that he wasn't the only one and he's seeing the funny side as well. So that's all good and well done for doing your first triathlon. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully the rest of the race went well as, um, as well. Um, and our next picture here, is from Roman and I'm realising that this is Roman <laughs> with none other than you. It is, yeah. I didn't put this photo in but I just thought oh, I want to get Are into these sure photos. Yeah, I promise. So moving on, we've now got a pretty impressive story here. This has been sent in by Ian and it is son Ben, or his son rather, Ben, competing I find this quite incredible, but it's his first Olympic distance triathlon, aged eight, and he has taken only three hours and 11 minutes. That's incredible, isn't it? It is rather, yeah, I mean. Um, um, he says he's got a sight set on trying to do it in under three hours in the same event next year, and that was in Dubai, because they have asked us, when is GTN coming back to Dubai? Because he would love to meet yeah. us, so that's cool. We'd love to come back in the winter when it's gray and miserable yeah. here. Yeah, for sure. Um, our final picture is here from Ramir, and Fraser didn't put oh, this one in, this but it me. is a Trek Speed concept, Fraser. Do you um, know what, Fraser, have you noticed? And I actually only just included this one around here because we haven't already talked about the GTN kit, but I think you need to go back on Zwift yeah. and get some GTN kit on your avatar. Some GCN sneaking I'm seeing the red and white of GCN. Not, not happy about that one. Yeah, thanks for sending that in. That looks like a great little setup. Yeah, and if you've got some photos that you want to share with us and you want us to discuss on the show, then do make sure you use the upload of the link on the screen now or find it in the description below. Now it's time for our caption competition yet again and this week's picture is, well, everybody's favourite long course British triathlete, right? It's a Lucy. Oh wait a minute, it's not the right Lucy. Lucy Gossage. Um, so here is our first one. It is Random Hero J3 has said, come on girls, I can't do the YMCA alone. CA. Can oh, you do it Fraser? Can you do it alone? No, 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 show us. Show us the YMCA. I can't do any wives. Y M C. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah, Fraser can do it alone, right. though. Right, our next one comes in from Matthew Fath. Um, when you find out the swim is wetsuit legal. I think there's quite a few people with you on yep, that one. Sharing that, yeah, well, been there with that one too. Um, uh, next one, Tim Fowler. Oh, good morning, Wales. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like it. But our favourite this week is David Jennings with Yes. Feels so good to have chicks Mark at Norseman. Now, if you don't know what we're on about, you need yeah. to go back and watch the Norseman video. Um, but well done to David. You're going to be having a GTN cap on its way to you. So do get in contact for that one. And our photo this week for your chance to win a GTN cap comes in from a rather wet and windy looking Weymouth from the Ironman 70.3 that happened just on the weekend. And there's all sorts going yeah, on here. Yeah, I know exactly what that feels like because I did Weymouth last year and it was equally wet and miserable and I know exactly what that promenade feels like. But yeah, Did you I mean, see any spectators 
in their pants. <laughs> well, there, is, there, is a lot of, there is a lot of people swim on that beach who have got no interest in swimming in a triathlon. So, I mean, it is quite a busy little I mean, and the person in the wetsuit looks quite shocked that there's someone running. <laughs> yeah, what on earth are they doing? Yeah, yeah. but um, then, I mean, I would be more shocked that there's a bicycle chained to a post so next to someone who's in their swimming kit. But so, all sorts going on. So, please go wild. Let's um, drop us the comments um, in the, the down there below and we'll see what you've got to say next week. Well, before you head off, we've got some great videos coming up next week. And if you've got your eyes set on Kona for next year, but you want to know how to get good enough, well, Mark has made a great video on that, so keep your eyes out for that one. Also, if you want a little bit of help with getting better at running off the bike, then Chelsea Sedaro has got some great tips in a video too. And talking about Kona, if you want to get yourself in the vibe or the mood for supporting for that, Into oh, the Hawaiian talking, spirit, you there you go, Fraser. He's well, ready. Head over to our shop because there's some brand new Kona edition themed t-shirts that you could buy there. So I'm looking forward to us getting a hold of those. So, um, yep, yeah, please do that. Um, also, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumb up like button, find the globe on screen to get all the other videos we've done on the channel. And finally, if you want to see a video that we did while we were just talking about the Zwift challenge with Lucy and Reese Barkley, then you can find that here. And one other video, if you're getting some pain from running and you want to know when it's, when you should stop, when you should push through, there's a video on that just down here.